Inshallah, we'll be reading from verse number 46 of Surah 40, which is Surah Ghafir, also known as Surah Al-Mu'min. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم النار يعرضون عليها غدوا وعشيا ويوم تقوم الساعة أدخلوا آل فرعون أشد العذاب وإذ يتحاجون في النار فيقول الضعفاء للذين استكبروا فيقول الضعفاء للذين استكبروا إنا كنا لكم تبعا فهل أنتم مغنون عنا نصيبا من النار قال الذين استكبروا إنا كل فيها إن الله قد حكم بين العباد وقال الذين في النار لخزنة جهنم ادعوا ربكم يخفف عنا يخفف عنا يوما من العذاب قالوا أولم تك تأتيكم رسلكم بالبينات قالوا بلى قالوا فادعوا وما دعاء الكافرين إلا في ضلال إنا لننصر رسلنا والذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا ويوم يقوم الأشهاد يوم لا ينفع الظالمين معذرتهم ولهم اللعنة ولهم سوء الدار ولقد آتينا موسى الهدى وأورثنا بني إسرائيل الكتاب هدى وذكرى لأولي الألباب فاصبر إن وعد الله حق واستغفر لذنبك وسبح بحمد ربك بالعشي والإبكار إن الذين يجادلون في آيات الله بغير سلطان أتاهم إن في صدورهم إلا كبر ما هم ببالغين فاستعذ بالله إنه هو السميع البصير لخلق السماوات والأرض أكبر من خلق الناس ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون وما يستوي الأعمى والبصير والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات ولا المسيء قليلا ما تتذكرون إن الساعة لآتية لا ريب فيها ولكن أكثر الناس لا يؤمنون وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon the one whom there is no messenger to follow and we send blessings and salutations upon all his household, his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all. Obviously Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was the final messenger. No one is to follow him, meaning to come after him as a messenger. But we are all his followers. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that from us and to make us from those who are steadfast. My mothers and sisters, this morning's verses, very, very powerful, extremely relevant. 
and a great lesson for us all where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing a certain issue and the issue is firstly the punishment of the grave as well as the fact that heaven and hell are already created by Allah and they are in existence so these are some important factors of belief that we learn from the first verses that we read this morning Allah is speaking of Fir'aun and his cronies and those who disobeyed Allah says the fire they are exposed to it morning and afternoon so both parts of the day they are exposed to the fire up to the day that Allah will resurrect them so this would mean that when a person dies and they are in their graves at a certain point a window of heaven is open for them or a window of hell is open for them may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those whom heaven is written for Jannah so that we can be from those who would have coolness in the grave so those who have the heat of hellfire that is presented forth for them in this particular grave Allah makes mention of this and Allah says that the fire they are exposed to it morning and afternoon and on the day that the hour will be established it will be said to the angels cause Fir'aun and his people to enter the severest torment which is speaking of Jahannam or hellfire so they will be instructed the angels will be instructed to make them enter hellfire we ask Allah to protect us from it like I said the two most important things that we need to understand there are many important lessons but two of them one is the fact that there is definitely punishment in the grave and it is a reality how exactly it will happen Allah alone knows but we believe it does happen and it happens in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written and in a way that he decides uh, secondly we also learn that heaven and hell are in existence right now we all know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went up physically to Mi'raj going up the ascension into the heavens and he saw heaven and hell he saw Jannah and Jahannam he came back and he described them to us so we believe it is already in existence it is there and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all this time that we are spending in this world is actually nothing it's actually a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Time is a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for him, uh, it is nothing. But he has created heaven and hell. What we also need to do, my mothers and sisters, is ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from Jahannam or from hellfire and ask him to grant us entry into Jannah. You never know when it is going to be the moment of acceptance of dua. And therefore, it's important to continue asking. And inshallah, we will learn later on in today's verses what else we should be doing. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the fire and the people who will enter the fire may Allah save us from that the, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whenever he came across verses that made mention of punishment and fire he paused for a moment and asked Allah to protect him from that and whenever he came across verses that made mention of goodness and paradise and good things he paused for a moment and he made dua that Allah grant him that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us in the uh, style and method and habits of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a great reward if we follow it so therefore we too should be pausing for a moment asking Allah as we do normally when we are uh, reading verses of the Quran or just talking to one another come across something good ask for it come across something bad ask to be protected from it that's the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ يَتَحَاجُونَ فِي النَّارِ and on that day they will be arguing with one another disputing with one another uh, in the fire Whilst they're in the fire, they will want to play the blame game. And as you and I know, the blame game does not help at all. They will say, in fact, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanallah, and mention when they will argue within the fire and the weak will say to those who had been arrogant. So those who were weak will talk to the others who were arrogant on earth. Some people on earth are slightly weaker. And some people have much more power, much more authority. They are more wealthy and so on. So the weak who followed the footsteps of the arrogant or the wealthy or those in authority, 
If those footsteps were wrong, they will all end up in hellfire. And when they end up in hellfire, the weak will then address the arrogant because they will all be burning together. And Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. But the weak will then tell the arrogant, Indeed, we only followed you. We were only your followers. So will you not take a share of the punishment of the fire that we have? What a powerful question. We followed you in the world. We, we saw what you did and we did it. Now we are all in the punishment together. But it's only fair that you guys were the top shots. So you need a bit more of the punishment than we. Because we were only mere followers. We don't deserve all this punishment. You need to take a portion of it off our shoulders. So we are asking that you shoulder some of our punishment. Now look at what the answer comes. They say, those who had been arrogant will say, indeed, all of us are in it right now. We're all in the fire. So stop playing the blame game. We're in it. You people had your own brains. You had your own capacity. Who told you to follow us? Even if we said follow us, you needed to use your own brain and say, no, we're going to follow Allah. And we're going to follow uh, the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or revelation and so on. But because you just followed us, we are not to blame. So we are all in it right now. Indeed, Allah has judged between between the servants. Indeed, Allah has judged between the servants. From this we learn that everyone has to answer for himself. So if you are following, follow Allah. Follow Rasulullah Follow what is correct. Follow revelation. You will be saved. The minute you have to follow this man and that man, he has no guarantee that he will be in heaven. So how can he give us a guarantee that we will be in heaven? Here it is loud and clear. If someone has no guarantee, and this is why I laugh at some of the, you know, the, the, the cults that have come out of Islam sometimes. They use the name of Islam and they promote a cult where they say, and I was reading about it yesterday in fact, where there is a big guru who claims to be a big Muslim and he says, you follow me and you will be spared the punishment of the grave and you will be granted entry into paradise because I will just let Allah know the list of names of my followers. Okay, if that was the case, surely, surely that person would be able to do much more. But he doesn't know himself. He doesn't know himself whether he's going to go into heaven or not. Subhanallah. So how can he guarantee that you and I will go there? Even Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, there is no guarantee. I cannot guarantee you. You have to do your deeds. And he gave us so many different ingredients to be put in together, mixed properly and thoroughly in order for us to come out with this beautiful entry into paradise. You try, you engage in tawbah, you follow Allah, you follow his Rasul wasallam. You need to use your brain to a certain extent, which means you need to understand what's right and wrong. Don't let people fool you. You live once. People have arrived at the moon according to some of those who have said so. But to be honest with you, we still do not understand what is right and wrong. We still sometimes worship sticks and stones and animals and graves and, 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 and people whom we call saints. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those saints Jannah. But if we are worshipping people, we have def definitely lost the way. We have lost the way. You worship Allah and Allah alone. You know when we say, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in in Surah Al-Fatiha, you alone we worship, you alone we seek help from. There is no exception for that. Not at all. So you can't say, yes, you alone we worship, but we can also worship this other guru because his beard is quite long. Subhanallah. You can't do that. You can't say that. He himself will die one day. He will have sickness one day. May Allah protect us from these viruses and Ebola and whatever is going on in Africa at the moment. But he doesn't have a guarantee that he will be saved from it. If he was guaranteed that, let him go and help the people there without wearing protective, protective clothing. Subhanallah, he, he will never be able to do that. So what guarantee does he have of going into Jannah? And people worship him. When people are hurt, the first thing they say is, Oh saint, help us. Instead of saying, Oh Allah, help us. Subhanallah. Wallahi, this is happening amongst people who call themselves Muslim. And when we correct them, then they say, No, you are a deviant. You are wrong. We, we know what we are doing. Come on. Come on. Subhanallah. Come on. Wake up. Subhanallah. You live once. You don't worship those who are worshippers. But you worship the one who is worshipped Allah. Allah alone. And this is why even the Sahaba radiallahu anhum confirmed إِنَّ اللَّهَ بْتَعَثَ مُحَمَّدًا لِيُخْرِجَ الْعِبَادِ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ 
Allah has indeed sent the messenger Muhammad sallallahu in order to remove the worshippers from worshipping other worshippers to worshipping the one who is the Rabb of all the worshippers, who is the creator alone. So that's what Islam is all about. So here... The argument and debate will be, you see Fir'aun and his cronies used to tell the people that Fir'aun is the God and he is the one who provides and he is the owner of sustenance, call out to him. So people used to worship him. Up to this day, there are people who worship Fir'aun, they worship the devil, they go to the pyramids, they worship the devil and Satan and so on. Every year they have this satanistic uh, concert in December back in Egypt and so on and across the globe it's happening from the time of the pharaohs may Allah protect us all and this is why Fir'aun used to say I am God but he died where is he you cannot hear him he cannot speak nothing no way besides mention being made in the scriptures of him and in history perhaps there's no other mention of him subhanallah may Allah protect us from such haughtiness so himself he will tell the people hey how can I take some of the punishment you guys should have thought for yourselves here we are so the others of today are smaller than the Pharaoh in power you know Firaun was a very powerful person extremely powerful those pyramids they've made there are something known as wonders of the world and we all know that it's not easy to replicate that or to build that again that does not make Firaun the God not at all no matter how powerful you are what you've achieved what you've invented and so on it does not make you the God Allah creates from nothing Subhanallah, that is the God, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us from those who worship Him and Him alone. I mean, so the hope that we have in Jannah is based on whether or not we've worshipped Allah alone. If you worship Allah alone, you have great hope in entering paradise, even without reckoning sometimes. May Allah grant us Jannah without reckoning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly that they will say we are all in it together here and Allah has judged between the servants. Verse number 49, Allah says, And those in the fire will say to the keepers of hell, who are the keepers of hell? The angels who will be looking after hellfire, who are responsible for hellfire, ensuring people go in, where they go, what happens, all the details, instruction from Allah they take. So these are gatekeepers of hell. Uh, one of them is known as Malik. Malik. So Malik is one of the names of one of the angels who will be tasked or who is tasked uh, to look after or to keep uh, an eye on or uh, known as a, a keeper of hell, a gatekeeper of hell. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Wallahi. May Allah protect us. It is quite scary to be honest with you. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The people in Jahannam, in the fire, will be telling the keepers of hell, Call out to your Lord to lighten for us the punishment of this day. We want a day, a single day of punishment to be lightened. So we want just a holiday. One day, we've been punished every single day, day in, day out. Call out to your Lord for us to have one day's respite only. Now, pause there. It's a very interesting verse. One is they're not calling out on their own. In this particular verse, Allah is not speaking about those who called out on their own because these will already feel like they've lost out. They had one chance. YOLO. That means you only live once. That's what it means. The whole world says you only live once so do as you please and we say you only live once so do not make a mistake that's what we say you only live once so prepare for the death in the correct way and they say you only live once so do as you please enjoy life so you go and do this and, and at the end of the day when you're about to die you know, sit and think. It's very healthy to think about death. It's actually a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He tells us, you want to improve, you want to destroy your haram desires and lusts, think a lot about death. So you sit and you think, what if these are my dying moments? At any time, you can just start thinking that. Where will I go? What will happen? The body of mine will be completely closed, meaning shut off. They will bury it. Where will I be? Well, I know I'm going to go back to the one who made me in the first place. Otherwise, this person and that stick and this stone and that grave and that tree is not going to help me. Not at all. You need to know this. It's Allah and Allah alone. Subhanallah. So this is why we say, when we say you only live once, so prepare for the death in the correct way. Because that is the one death. لا يموتون فيها الموت إلا الموتة الأولى. The death is only once. In this world, you die once. That's it. There's no two deaths, you know. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. When we are resurrected, after that, we will be living for eternity. May Allah grant us Jannah. So they will call out to the angels to say, you call out to Allah. Because they feel useless, number one. Number two is, they know that the angels are close to Allah. 
But they were told about the angels. Today, we are told about the angels. We are speaking about them. So the angels, when they hear this call from the people of hellfire, telling them that, you know what, call out to Allah. We only want one day of grace. Imagine when you're working Monday to Friday and when Friday evening comes and you're about to knock off from work, how happy do you feel? You know. And I know the children at school also feel the same when they've been working Monday to Friday, come Friday, one o'clock, and they're so excited, phew, we're going to have two days free off, subhanAllah. And they get so excited about it. And Sunday evening comes and everyone's feeling depressed. We're going back to work Monday morning. And that's what happens. And Monday morning comes and everyone just forces themselves to go to work. And believe me, nowadays with the new generation, even Monday morning, they're not bothered. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. So one day of relief feels so good. What about in Jahannam? Every day suffer, turmoil, turbulence. These people will actually call out, we want only one day. Now listen to the answer they will get. The angels will say to these people, did they not come to you, your messengers, with clear proofs, with the verses of Allah? Did these messengers not come to you, clear proofs? Subhanallah. Didn't the clear evidence, the proofs come to you via your messengers? They will say, yes, 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 they did. They did. So they have to admit, like with us, here are the verses, we're reading them, we're seeing them. Here are the signs, people are dying in front of us. The healthy have gone and the wealthy have gone and the powerful have gone. And we're busy thinking we're not going to go. May Allah protect us. I was in Bulawayo yesterday and subhanallah, something amazing and unique. You know, I was speaking about how the whole world is turning towards Islam. So many who were far away are now reading salah five times a day. Those who used to dress so scantily have now covered themselves up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. We don't want to be the only ones who are losing out. It's a huge wave and we need to make sure that we are with it. Because if we are not doing it, it's not like others are not. They're all there already. We're the only ones losing out. So be careful. And this is the thing. Everyone is turning towards Allah. Why should we be left out? Everyone is dressing appropriately one by one. Go and see top celebrities, politicians, whoever else. Top people have humbled themselves down for Allah. They've realized no matter how solid and powerful and beautiful and gorgeous we are, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. We only have hope in His mercy. One day we're going to go. So they're all now on that bandwagon of goodness. Why don't we go on it as well? Why don't we join the wave of goodness? Allahu Akbar. There are people who get up for Salatul Fajr, people who get up at four in the morning every day. Yet just last year they did not used to read Salah. But they would never miss a Salah anymore. But we still snoring. Sometimes we've been reading Salah and then something happens in our lives and we become despondent and we stop reading Salah. Why? I'm upset with Allah. Astaghfirullah. I've heard that myself. People have told that to me. That you know Allah's not replying me, so why must I worship Him? Are you worshipping Allah because you want a reply? Is that what it is? Allah knows what's better for you. Perhaps what's better for you is not a reply. I remember someone who made dua for 10 years to marry someone and they ended up then getting married to them and about 6 months later they were divorced. And they said, I just wish Allah did not accept my dua. And I was the one who busy said, you know, but you were crying so badly for 10 years and subhanAllah, they would, if Allah did not accept your dua, you'd have turned further away from Allah. Saying that, oh Allah, why didn't you accept my dua? So Allah's mercy, He accepted it to show you that hang on it was always best for us to keep that person far away from you even though you with your small little brain and mind thought that that person was the best for you we know what's not good for you so that's why we kept it away from you but you kept on going in the wrong direction what should we do we allowed you to drop into it and now you came out at least now we have a good relationship Allahu Akbar. that's the plan of Allah we don't understand it sometimes you know, people say, my child died, this person, may Allah grant them all Jannah, may Allah grant them goodness, may Allah never test us with tests that are too difficult for us to pass. There are widows in our midst, there are orphans in our midst, there are so many people who've been through calamity and so much of difficulty. But Allah knows that for you, that's the best thing that could have ever happened. You want to ask how? If Allah gives you Jannah in return for your sabr, there was never ever a better thing that could have happened for you. That's what it is. Ultimately, what do you want, my mothers, my sisters? What do you want? We all want paradise. I want, you want. We all want paradise. So if Allah says, look, I'll make you suffer for 40 years. After that, there's an eternity of goodness. I think it's a cheap deal. But Allah says, no, my mercy, I won't make you suffer for all those years. Subhanallah. But we call death a suffering. But that's the only way you can go to paradise. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. Imagine. May Allah open our doors. We call death a suffering. When someone dies, we perceive it as a great loss. But Allah says that person's going to Jannah. They have to go. 
And it's about time they went. And you know what? That's the only way you're going to go into the hereafter is through something known as death. So it has to come. So look at it. Yes, it is a loss because we would miss them. That's correct. And it's a loss because we, we became close to them. Yes, correct. We may cry. We may pray for them, make dua for them, do whatever is permissible in that regard. But we need to know ultimately that was Allah. Allah gave them life. Allah loves them much more than I can or you can or any other creature can because Allah made them in the first place. So this is now talking about hellfire where they are arguing and the message from the angels is didn't the messengers come to you reading the proofs or showing you the evidences and so on? And the people of hell will say yes, yes they did. They will reply yes they did. Then the, the angels will say then supplicate yourselves but the supplication of the disbelievers is nothing but in error. Futile. Waste of time. You want to call out to Allah now. Too late. You can call out as much as you want. When it was time to call out whilst you were alive in this, in the test. You know this dunya is known as Darul Ibtila. It is known as uh, the, 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 the place of test. That's all it is. It's just a test. How many years? Only 70 years. Only, only, only 70 years. Not more. So whilst we were in the test, we didn't write the answers. And we knew them. You know the answers. My mothers and sisters, I know the answers. You know the answers of the, of the questions that Allah has asked us in this test of ours, so to speak. But we don't write the answers sometimes. We write the wrong answer. We know what will get you into heaven and what will get you into hell, but we still write the wrong answer. Then when we come out of our examination and you know everyone's discussing, hey, how did it go, how did it go? You know the excitement after you've written that O-level and people say, oh no, I wrote this and I wrote that. You might not have known the O-level answer, but in the world you knew the answer, you knew how to get Allah's pleasure. You knew it and so did I. But human weakness sometimes makes us falter. So Allah says, okay, seek forgiveness. We're going to come to that in a few minutes. But my mothers and sisters, whilst we are in the exam room, do as much as you can. Once the bell rings, so to speak, there's no more chance. There's no more time. Then you can call out as much as you want. Oh Allah, you are one. Allah says, but you didn't believe that before you died. Oh Allah, I'm calling out to you. Okay, what's the point right now? It's too late. This is why we need to learn a lesson from this. So Allah says, Subhanallah, indeed, we will support our messengers and those who believe during the life of this world and on the day when the witnesses will stand. So this is showing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help will be with the believers, those who believe. Now sometimes people misinterpret this and they think it means that the believers will always be at the top. They'll have the most money, the most wealth, the most authority. That's the sign of, you know, true believers because Allah says we're going to help the believers. That's not the meaning of the term help. It means whatever Allah has chosen to do for you, you'll always be in the content mode because you know that Allah is in control and in charge. We are trying to earn Allah's pleasure. Whatever He does is not a punishment. It is actually a means of our quicker entry into paradise. That's Allah. So that's the winning. And this is why the angels were, perse sorry, the, the messengers were persecuted in a very big way. All the messengers were persecuted. So much so that anyone who wants to do the job of the messengers will also be persecuted. You want to call out to Islam, you will be persecuted no matter who you are. People, if you're calling out to the right deen, one of the signs that you are on the right path is that you will be persecuted. If you're not persecuted or harassed in one way or another, you may be on the wrong path. Allahu Akbar. Because this is a path full of difficulty. Difficulty meaning worldly difficulty. But a believer goes through all that with a smile. And he knows that I need to live this life which is very short for the sake of Allah. In a way that will, will, will please Allah. We are deceived. You know in this world we really think that life is all about earning and setting ourselves. And a lot of us want to set our children and we set them one after the other. And when we die, we say, wow, you know what? My, I've set my children and my grandchildren. They all have houses, cars and businesses that will work even if they have to sleep whole day and all night. So mashallah, I'm a very successful person. Once you die, the people will say, wow, what a successful person. And the angels are asking you, what did you bring here? What did you bring? And then you're going to say, oh no, you know what? Everything I left, even my clothes, yo, they're there. May Allah protect us. Then it's too late. So Allah says, do your deeds. So that when you do your deeds, when you come down, your salah will protect you as you're being lowered into the grave. Your zakah will come and protect you as you're being lowered into the grave, according to some of the narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Your deeds will start helping you even before you're in your grave. They start helping you. So do those deeds as well. And this is why we say, don't wait until it's too late. Let's do our deeds. Life is not all about the fun and the games that, and that, that is being shown to us and marketed to us. It's not all about that. Yes, you may make use of everything, mashallah, but only to draw you closer to Allah. You have a beautiful car. When you enter it, you thank Allah. You, you, you praise Allah. You have a dua going. You're happy of your identity. Allah's given you beautiful looks. Those looks do not last more than a few years. Remember that. Unless you go for Botox. Allah protect us. Those looks do not last for too long. And even then, you start getting old and sick and your pains and this. Because Allah is showing you, look, we gave it to you. But when we gave it to you, did you thank Allah? Did you obey Allah? Or did you allow all that to divert you completely away, off the path completely. It's like, you know, Allah has given you this luxury vehicle and you choose to drive on a dust road. Allahu Akbar. So Allah has given you beautiful looks and you're driving on a dust road, meaning you're doing the wrong things. Rather you have everything come onto the right path. It's a huge, beautiful carpeted highway that will continue. And if you have iman and correct belief, you'll always be a happy person. Because Allah says, I will test you with loss of property, loss of wealth, loss of life. These are my tests. Part of the examination, I will tell you. What, what are you going to do? Here it is. I'm putting you into a scenario. Go into it and see how you come out. Wallahi, if that was translated into a game of today. You know, we have some of these reality games. And if this was translated into a game where you had to score... Uh, people would play it much better. But, the, but life, in fact, we need to score the most. It's a reality. It's something that's going to take us into Jannah. May Allah grant us Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, Indeed, we will assist, we will support our messengers and those who believe during the life of this world. So two things. You believed while in the dunya, you are supported by Allah, helped by Allah. You believe in Allah, He will help you even in the dunya. So there's dual meaning of this, subhanAllah. And at the same time, Allah will assist you on the day when the witnesses will stand. You are assisted, you are helped. The day their excuse will not benefit the wrongdoers. So the wrongdoers will start presenting their excuses. No benefit. You don't have to say anything. No excuse. And they will have the curse. And they will have the worst home in hell. Who are they? The wrongdoers. Now, we've all done wrong. But here, wrongdoers refers to those who did not repent from their sin. Or those who did not turn to Allah's path. So a person who does wrong, there is still hope for them for as long as they are breathing. They say, oh Allah, forgive me. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. I bear witness that Allah is one. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his final messenger. Subhanallah. And we turn to Allah, oh Allah, forgive me. I admit my fault. I regret it. I won't do it again. And I ask you to forgive me, ya Allah. Allah says, forgiven. But if we have not done that, then we're playing with fire. Literally playing with the real fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and make us repent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on that day, no excuse will benefit the wrongdoers. Nothing. They can say what they want. They can do what they want. They can, that nothing will benefit them because they know the curse of Allah will be upon them. They will have the curse and they will have the worst home. The worst home. Then Allah says, and we have certainly given Moses, Musa alayhi salam guidance. And we caused the children of Israel, the children of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam to inherit the scripture. The children of Yaqub, Yaqub alayhi salam, Jacob, may peace be upon him, was known as Israel. That was one of his names. So when Allah says the children of Israel, he's talking of the children of Yaqub. Subhanallah. So Allah says, we gave them the guidance. And we made them the inheritors of the scripture as guidance and a reminder for those of understanding. So if you have an understanding, you're willing to look into the verses, you're willing to look at it, you're willing to try and understand the word of Allah, you will understand things. Look at it, learn, put into practice. So Allah says to Muhammad wasallam, so be patient indeed. The promise of Allah is the truth. Be patient, O Muhammad wasallam. Indeed, the promise of Allah is the truth. Now, stop for a moment. If Allah is telling this to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the lesson is for myself and yourselves as well. 
Be patient. Things will happen to you, my mothers and sisters, that you don't like. Be patient. The promise of Allah is the truth. And you know what? Soon you find out it's true. Already we know it's true. We believe it's true. But someone dies. That's the promise of Allah. A lot of the prophecies given from Muhammad have already started coming into play. We see the disasters across the globe today. All this was prophesied by Muhammad completely and totally. And what is to come is even worse. May Allah safeguard us and our offspring. Keep us steadfast on the deen. One wonders what will happen. But what, one thing that is certain is we all need to die. Die. We all need to die. We have to. Even if you were asked, you know what? Choose how you want to go. You still won't want to go. Even if you were asked, choose when you want to go, you still won't want to go. Why? Because we think this life is everything. And Allah says, but it's not. If it was everything, 70 years is too little. Too little. We would have given you a thousand years, 10,000 years, and told you just enjoy. Do as you please, as you like. Go. Dance every evening. Go and have fun at the clubs and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us, really. And may He safeguard our offspring from the dangerous nightlife that there is. Today, sin is committed even out openly during the daylight. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be patient. Indeed, the promise of Allah is the truth. Then Allah says, and ask forgiveness for your sin. Subhanallah. What is intended is fault or error in judgment. Subhanallah. All the prophets of Allah, they were protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here the lesson is for me and you more than anything else. So when Allah says, ask forgiveness for your sin. You know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to ask forgiveness although he was sinless. He used to say, astaghfirullah up to a hundred times a day. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness up to a hundred times a day. We who are so sinful, who commit up to more than a hundred sins a day, have not even said astaghfirullah with genuineness and sincerity even once a day. In most cases. Look at the irony. So Allah says, you want to meet with Allah, you want to save yourself from what's go going to happen to those in hell. And the tenses used, the past tense and present tense, because although it's going to happen in the future, it's as good as done. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him, like I said, time is nothing. It's just a creature of Allah. He created it and he put us into what we know as present tense. But for him, it's as good as done. Subhanallah. We won't understand it, so let's not bother even trying. But what we do know is it's definitely coming for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very beautifully, He says, seek forgiveness for your sin and exalt Allah, which means subhanallah, praise Allah, glorify Allah with praise. Exalt with the praise of your Lord in the evening and in the morning. You want to be saved from hellfire, you want goodness, you want to be protected, then remember Allah often, morning and evening. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, glory be to you, all praise be to you. You made me, you alone I worship, you alone I ask for help. I'm, my entire existence is in your control and so is the... Uh, Complete creation is under your control. Ya Allah, have mercy on me. Protect me. Help me go through the tests that you have chosen for me. Ya Allah, whatever sickness I have, cure me. Ya Allah, if you've written for no cure for me, then grant me goodness in some way that I can achieve paradise because of whatever I'm enduring in your cause. Ya Allah, those whom you've taken away from my loved ones, grant them Jannah and help me to go through it and grant me Jannah for the sabr that I am going through because you've taken so many of my loved ones away. And so on and so on. Ya Allah, the disaster, the loss that I've suffered financially, Ya Allah, help me in a way that I can earn paradise as a result, Ya Allah. All these type of du'as and adhkar, you know, supplications and remembrance of Allah will help you. But it must be morning and evening. Not just one day when you've got a problem, you're remembering Allah and the next day everything is okay. So Allah is by the way. That's not how it should be. So this is why we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that be patient, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, the promise of Allah is the truth. And ask forgiveness for your sin and exalt the praise of your Lord in the evening and in the morning. And this means all the time. Whenever you can, remember Allah, subhanallah. My mothers and sisters, you know, sometimes we have a bad habit. The minute you have a free moment and there's silence in the motor vehicle, first thing that goes on is the Bollywood song or the Hollywood song. And then we're busy tapping our fingers and feeling so nice and, you know, flicking our hands through our hair and everything else. And what happens is we're feeling so good, chewing our gum and perhaps a little bit of a cigarette, feeling big. And what happens? 
That entire time could have been used to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Oh Allah, you are the greatest. Say it in English if you don't know the Arabic. Oh Allah, you are my maker. I love you so much. Have mercy on me. Forgive my shortcomings, Ya Allah. I'm going to return to you. The day I return to you, Ya Allah, have mercy on me. I'm trying my best, Ya Allah. I try to be good. Make me strong. Make me strong so that I can obey your instruction, Ya Allah. Help me so that I can read your word, Ya Allah. Understand what you want from me and help me to do that. This is business. This is what you're talking. This is the real business. Because you see the other business, when Allah says in the Quran, should I show you business that you can do that will be very profitable? And then he tells you to follow his path. So some people say, oh, what type of business is that? We need dollars. We need hard cash. We need currency. We need the pounds and the rands and so on. Because that is business. What is business? Business is a deal. You do dealings, right? In order to earn so that you can live and spend. Well, the best business is in order to earn the, the currency that will be able to, to buy you the eternal home. What's the small business you're going to earn a million bucks to buy a house in the brook or wherever else you want? May Allah grant us all good homes. I mean, but you're going to buy that home and you're only going to live in there for what? A maximum of how many? You tell me how many years do you want to live? If you're already 40, I don't think you barely got another 40 to live. By that time, your son who's living in the same property will say, Oh, Ya Allah, take this mom of mine away. She's harassing my wife and my kids. May Allah not do that to us. So imagine we become a pain in the backside. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. Really, we become a pain for our own kids sometimes. And we don't realize that, you know, I earned all the money, I bought it for my child. Well, that's life. Allah is telling you the best thing for you to have done is what we call Allah, Allah. You know, you sit and you remember Allah and you continue, subhanallah, and you be warned of Allah and you try your best to be conscious of Allah and that's when you move further. So this is what we need to prepare for my mothers and sisters. May Allah grant myself paradise and yourselves too. May Allah unite us in Jannah. Wallahi, one day, if we are in Jannah, perhaps we will be remembering this day and say, you know, you remember those days? Subhanallah, we'll be able to remember them. May Allah grant us that. So here we're reading the rest of the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. Those verses that I recited this morning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, those who dispute concerning the signs of Allah, concerning the verses of Allah, without any evidence having come to them, there is not within their chests except pride. They're only proud and arrogant. When you read a verse of Allah, someone says, no, I deny that. I don't, agree. I don't believe that. That's wrong. That, is, that needs to be modified. The Quran is not valid. Astaghfirullah. These signs of Allah are not valid and so on. All that Allah says, you know what? They are proud. They're just too proud and arrogant to accept the truth. But they know it's the truth deep down. You know, people think that there's a solution other than the solutions provided by the maker himself. They're talking nonsense. And for as long as they are saying that there are solutions besides what Allah has revealed, believe me, they have arrogance. They are rejecting the truth. They have pride in them. And some of them haven't even studied the truth. May Allah safeguard us. Today we have this trend where across the globe people want to find fault in Islam. And they do it in such a professional way that some weak Muslims begin to doubt the Islamic solutions which are clearly stipulated sometimes in the Quran. What is clear, you cannot even debate about it. You cannot. Subhanallah, if you're a believer. But if you call yourself a disbeliever and you don't believe, that's between you and Allah. You need to answer to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah strengthen us. The solutions to the problems and the crises that we face in our lives is just to return to the path of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, There is not within their breasts or their chests except pride. The extent of which is, which they cannot reach. They cannot even reach the extent of it. So seek refuge in Allah. Seek the protection of Allah. Indeed, it is He who is the hearing and the seeing. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of mankind. But most of the people do not know. Most of the people do not know. The creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than than the creation of mankind. But most of the people do not know. And they are not equal, those who are blind and those who are seeing. Nor are those who believe and do righteous deeds equivalent to the evil doer. They are not equal. They are very different. Little do you remember. Allah says, indeed, the hour is coming, no doubt about it. The hour is coming. There are two types of hours. One is your death and mine is known as the smaller hour. And the other is the major hour. The end of time is coming. And Allah says, but most of the people do not believe.
Most of the people don't even believe. There are two types of disbelief here. One, those who openly disbelieve. And two, those who say they believe, but their actions, their actions are heading in another direction. So we say we believe, but our actions are heading in another direction. We have not prepared for that. So Allah says, and your Lord says, this is the last verse. Listen for all of us. Your Lord says, call upon me. I will respond to you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What does Allah say? Ud'uni astajib lakum. Call upon me. I will respond to you. He did not say call upon the tree, call upon the grave, call upon the man, call upon the guru, call upon the saint, call upon the wall, call upon this, call upon the aeroplane. No. He says call upon me. I will respond. So we all say, Oh Allah. Subhanallah. Ya Allah. O oh my maker, O oh my creator, Ya Rabbi, Allahumma, O oh my Allah, grant me this, do this. Why? Because Allah says, call me, call unto me, I will respond to you. I will respond to you. So Allah responds in several ways. Either he gives you what you want right here, right now, or he delays it for you, or he replaces it in a way that sometimes perhaps some evil will be uh, perhaps taken away from you as a result of your dua to him, your calling out to him. So there are several ways that Allah responds. But Allah says, call out to me. I will respond to you. And indeed, those... Those who are arrogant, those who are too proud to worship me, will enter into hellfire. And they will be in there for a long, long time, if not forever. So, what is meant here by those who are too arrogant to worship me? Those who don't call out to Allah. This is why one narration says, Malam yas Whoever does not ask Allah, Allah gets angry with that person. Whoever does not call out to Allah, Allah gets angry with them. So Allah has created needs in us so that we can call out to Him. If we had no needs, why would we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or it would require strong belief to still be calling out to Allah when you have no need whatsoever. So part of the mercy of Allah is He makes you in need. This is why we say when you have big, big problems, it's the gift of Allah. He's bringing you closer to Him. And it's a fact, we all see it. You've got a major disaster. We come out with sadaqat because we taught of that, charity. We taught that. And we, you have a major problem. You read extra salah. You give out something. You, you make extra adhkar. You ask for forgiveness. All this is because Allah says, look, I keep you in need so that you keep on calling out to me until you die in the condition that you were calling out to me. Myself and yourself have a very good link. That's when you earn, enter paradise. May Allah grant us paradise through his mercy. But a person who's forgotten Allah, doesn't want to call out to Allah, you have a problem and you're calling out to a bottle of water. If that's the case, then what do you expect? What, what will you get? Allahu Akbar. People call out to water. They call out to the ocean. They call out to the sun and the light that comes from the sun. They call out to the fire. They call out to the devil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Really. Protect your iman, my mothers and sisters. This was such a powerful session that we had this morning. Wallahi, it gives me much hope to say whilst Jahannam and Hellfire was being described and the debate and argument being described, but Allah says, you seek forgiveness, I forgive you. Remember me, morning and evening, seek forgiveness. And Allah says, call out to me, I will respond. May Allah respond. May Allah respond to our call and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki.